Yes, I'm back. Back to remind you that fear is always just a glance, a touch, a smell, a thought away. We can run away from fear, hide from it, but our mind is a place where terror is trapped. In today's story, we enter a woman's mind, have access to it, to her mental diary. The woman, whose husband is a doctor, has not been well for some weeks. Her husband, however, does not believe that she is really ill, but, unlike us, he does not have that access to her thoughts and the evil that threatens from the very walls that surround her. It's possible you won't ever feel quite the same about the walls of your own room after you've been exposed to the yellow wallpaper. John is a physician, and perhaps I wouldn't say it openly to a living soul, of course, but these are my secretest thoughts, and I must express myself somehow and somewhere. Perhaps that is one reason I do not get well faster. John does not believe that I'm sick, or he says not. But, of course, it may be only to comfort me. And what can one do? If a physician of high standing and one's own husband assures friends and relatives that there's nothing the matter but temporary nervous depression, well, what can one do? So I take phosphates, or phosphites, whichever it is, and tonics and exercise, and am absolutely forbidden to work until I'm well again. What am I to do? Well, at least we're in the country now, and that's always... If I had less opposition, and perhaps a little more stimulus, that's what I need. But John says the worst thing I can do is to think about my condition. So I will let it alone and think about the house. It's a lovely house, the most beautiful place. We were so lucky to find it, quite alone and well back from the road and three miles from the village. So old, with hedges and walls and little gates that lock. And a delicious garden, so large and shady for me to walk in when I'm a little stronger. I sometimes wonder, is it haunted? There's definitely something strange about it, else why should it have stood so long untenanted before John took it? He laughs at me for talking that way. So does Jenny, his sister. But I don't care. There is something strange about the house. I can feel it. And can I confess? I don't like this room. Not a bit. No, not a bit. It was a nursery once, I think. The windows are barred for little children. But the paper, the paper looks as if a boy's school had once used this room. It's all stripped off, the paper, in great patches all round the head of my bed, about as far as I can reach. And in a great place on the other side of the room, low down. I never saw a more dreadful paper in my life. One of those sprawling, flamboyant patterns. All curves, creeping, uncertain, twisted curves. And the colour is repellent. A smouldering yellow all over, and a sickly sulfuric tint in some patches, and a lurid orange in others. No wonder the children hated it. I should hate it myself if I had to live here long. Unclean yellow. I'm sitting by the window now, up in this atrocious nursery. I'm glad my case is not serious, not really serious, but these nervous troubles are depressing. John doesn't know how much I really suffer. He knows there's no reason to suffer, and that satisfies him. I get so unreasonable with him sometimes, and angry with him sometimes. I never used to be so sensitive. Of course, it's only nervousness. 
But John says if I'm not careful, I shall lose all self-control. So I try to control myself. Or before him, at least. That makes me very tired. And then I cry. I meant to be such a help to John. And such a real comfort. And I think I'm only a burden. And he worries about me. Nobody would know what an effort it is to do what little I'm able, just to dress and walk about a little, perhaps, and order things. It's lucky Jenny is so good with our baby. And yet I can't be with him. Oh, it makes me so nervous. I suppose John was never nervous. He laughs at me sometimes about this wallpaper. At first he meant to repaper the room, but afterwards he said that I was letting it get the better of me and that nothing was worse for a nervous patient than to give way to such fancies. He said that after the wallpaper was changed, it would be the heavy bedstead, and then the barred windows, and then that gate at the head of the stairs, and so on. And it would not be worth doing much. We're not here for very long. And in a way, I'm getting quite fond of the big room. All but that paper. Teak yellow wallpaper. I can see the garden out of the window and the little deep-shaded arbours and the old-fashioned flowers and the trees. There's a beautiful shaded lane that runs from the house. I always fancy I see people walking in the paths. But John has told me not to give way to such fancy. So I try. At least I try. Oh, I wish I could get well faster. But I mustn't think about that either. This paper looks as if it knew what a vicious influence it had. There's a spot where the pattern lolls like a broken neck. And there are two bulbous eyes that stare upside down. I get angry with it and its impertinence and its everlastingness. And up and down and sideways they crawl. And those unblinking eyes are everywhere. And I never saw such expression in a thing before. An inanimate thing. Although... Inanimate things can have great expression. I used to lie awake as a child and get more entertainment and terror out of blank walls and plain furniture than most children could find in a toy shop. And I remember what a kindly wink the knobs of our big old desk used to have. And there was one chair that always seemed like a strong friend. I used to feel that if any of the other things looked too fierce, I could always hop into that chair and be safe. All safe. All safe. But there is no old chair in this room. Moonlight. And I lie here on this great bed and follow the pattern, hour by hour, how huge the bed is. I believe it is nailed down. I cry at nothing. Not when John is here, of course. Or anybody else. But when I am all alone. Like now. Tonight. I am alone in the house. I will follow the pattern. I will. I will. I, I start at the corner, the far corner, where the paper hasn't been torn away. I know a little of design, but this thing was never arranged in any design I ever heard of. Each strip is alone, all alone, and the bloated curves and the flourishes all in columns and they connect diagonally and they go off in long waves slanting waves like seaweed and there is another pattern behind but only in certain lights and I can fancy sometimes sometimes a formless sort of figure no no! No! <sighs> oh.
Oh, such an effort to think straight. I am to use my will. I am to keep well. He says, John says, that no one but myself can help me. If we had not used the room, the baby would have had it. I would never have a child in such a room for worlds. Oh, it's lucky John kept me here and would not let me get out, for I can stand it ever so much better than a baby. Of course, I never mention it to them anymore. I'm too wise. But I keep watch all the same. I keep watch. There are things in that paper nobody knows but me, or ever will. It's always the same shape, only very numerous. And it's like a woman stooping down and creeping about behind that pattern. I don't like it. I wish John would take me away from here. The moon shines all round, just as the sun does. I hate it sometimes. It creeps up so slowly. I got up softly a moment ago and went to feel and see if the paper did move. You think you have mastered the pattern, but you never have. Never. It changes as the light changes. No one else knows that. I imagine a toadstool in joints and an interminable string of toadstools and all budding and sprouting and in endless convolutions. And that there is something like it. That is sometimes. It changes so quickly I can never believe it. At night, in any kind of light, and in twilight and in candlelight and in lamplight, and worst of all in moonlight, it becomes bars. The outside pattern, bars. It's moonlight now. Bars. And the woman behind as plain as can be. I lie still. I just lie still. Oh, I lie down so much now. He says it is good for me, and I am to sleep all I can. But I don't sleep. I can't. It cultivates deceit. I don't tell them I'm awake. Oh, no. And I am almost a little afraid of... him, John. And he looks at me so strangely sometimes. And even Jenny looks strangely sometimes. And I think... I wonder that perhaps it is the... paper. I watch him when he doesn't know I watch. And I come into the room suddenly. And I catch him several times looking at the paper. And Jenny looking too. I caught Jenny with her hand on it once. Yesterday. She didn't know I was there and watching, and when I asked her in a quiet voice and very restrained, and I asked her what she was doing with the paper, she turned round as if she'd been caught stealing, and she looked quite angry. And then she said that the paper stained everything it touched, and that she'd found yellow marks and smudges on my clothes, and it sounded so innocent, so innocent. But I know she was studying the pattern, and nobody is to find out but me. Not anybody. The woman behind is quiet in the daytime, but at night. Now. Now. No. No. I will get better. I will get better. I will. I will. I will. I'm feeling so much better now. So much better. I don't sleep much at night, perhaps, for it's so interesting to watch. To watch developments. But I sleep a good deal in the daytime. In the daytime, it's tiresome and perplexing. There are always new shoots on the fungus. 
and new shades of yellow all over it. I can't keep count of them, I can't, though I have tried. It's the strangest yellow, that wallpaper. It makes me think of all the yellow things I ever saw. Not lovely ones like buttercups, but old yellow things. Foul yellow things. And there's something else about that paper. The smell. I noticed it the moment we came into the room, but with so much air and sun, it was never so bad. Now we've had a week of fog and rain, and whether the windows are open or not, the smell is here. It creeps all over the house. It lies in wait. I can turn my head suddenly and surprise it. It's not so bad at first, and very gentle, but so subtle and enduring. I wake up in the night and find it hanging over me. It used to disturb me at first. I thought perhaps of burning the house to reach the smell. But I'm used to it now. And the only thing I can think of that, that it's like is the color. The color of the wallpaper. A yellow smell. There is a mark on the wall. A new one. Very strange, low down near the skirting board. A long, long streak that runs right round the room. It goes behind every piece of furniture except the bed. A long, straight, even smudge, as if it had been rubbed over and over. I wonder how it was done and who did it. And why they did it. Round and round and round. Round and round and round. Oh, it makes me giddy. But I really have discovered something at last. I really have. Through watching. So much watching at night when it changes so. The front pattern does move. The woman behind makes it move. Sometimes I think there are a great many women behind. And sometimes only one. And she creeps round. She creeps round so fast. And the creeping moves it all over. Then in the bright places, she keeps still. So very still. And then she looks at me. For a long, long while, she just looks at me. And perhaps she'll take the bars for a moment. The shady places. And shake them. And she tries to climb out. But no one can climb out through that pattern. It strangles. That is why there's so many. And the eyes turn white when it strangles. But I think that woman gets out in the daytime. For I've seen her. I can see her out of every one of my windows. It's the same woman I know. For she's always creeping. I see her creeping up and down in that long shaded lane and the long road there, under the trees, creeping along. And when someone passes, she hides and crouches in the hedges. She won't want to be seen. No, it would be dreadful to be seen. It would be so humiliating to be caught in daylight. I always lock the door in daylight. I can't do it at night, for I know John would suspect something at once. And he's so strange now that I don't want to anger him. I don't want to distress him. I wish... Oh, if he would take another room. I don't want anyone to get the woman out at night but myself. I wonder often if I could see her out of all the windows at once. She may be able to creep faster than I can turn. I've watched her sometimes away in the open country, creeping as fast as a cloud shadow in a high wind. If only the top pattern could be got from the under one. I mean to try it, little by little. Yet there's so little time. Only two more days. I found another strange thing, but I shan't tell them. Not this time. No, it doesn't do to trust people too much. Oh, only two more days to get this paper off. And I believe John is beginning to notice. 
I don't like the look in his eyes. And I heard him ask Jenny a lot of professional questions about me. She had a very good report to give. She said I slept a good deal in the daytime. Well, John knows I don't sleep very well at night, for all I'm so quiet. He asked me so many questions and pretended to be very loving and kind. As if I couldn't see through him. Yet I think he's decided to go. Yes, at last. I shall have company in the new home. And I don't want company. Only two more days. He said he would go in two more days. He's come in. Oh, John has just come in. A moment ago, just a moment ago. And he... No. I want to go back a little in my thoughts. I want to take it all so calmly and simply. The realisation that John has decided that we will leave here and go back to town. I want to relish it. To relish it. Before he came in then. Just before he came in. Before he saw me, I was thinking so happily. This is the last day, the last day of all. And Oh, I was so happy. And even last night I was happy. Then Jenny wanted to sleep with me. John being in town. They're all so sly. But I told her I should rest better for a night all alone. And that was clever. For I wasn't alone. As soon as it was moonlight, the woman began to creep and move the pattern. I got up and ran to help her. I pulled and she shook and I shook and she pulled. And before morning we had peeled off strips and strips of it. A strip about as high as my head and half round the room. And then... When the sun came and the pattern began to laugh at me, I declared I would finish it today. We go away today. And they have moved all my own things down so as to leave things as they were before. Jenny looked at the wall in amazement when she came in this morning. But I told her merrily that I only did it out of spite, pure spite at the vicious thing. And she laughed, but so strangely, and said that she wouldn't mind doing it herself, but I'm not to get tired and how she betrayed herself that time. But I am here, and no person touches that paper but me. Not alive. Jenny tried to get me out of the room to wait downstairs till John came. Oh, it was too patent. But I said it was so quiet and empty and clean now, with all the things away, and I believed I would lie down and sleep again all I could, to get ready for the journey when John came, and not to wake me even for dinner, and I would call. When I woke. So, Jenny's gone now, and the servants are gone, and only that nurse is downstairs, waiting for John and I to come down. But John and I won't come down. Not for a long time. Nothing here now. Nothing at all. Except the great bedstead nailed down with the canvas mattress we found on it. I enjoy the room. Now it's bare again. But how these children did tear about here. Oh, they're great gouges and scratches on the floor. And the bedstead is all splintered and almost gnawed, it seems. But I must get to work again. I locked the door. I had to lock the door so that he wouldn't interrupt. And I threw the key out of the window through the bars down beside the front path. I brought a rope up here. I've got it now. And even Jenny didn't find it, though she looked all round. And if the woman does get out and tries to get away, I can tie her. <gasps> but I forgot. I forgot. I can't reach. I can't reach higher without anything to stand on. And there's only the bed. And the bed doesn't move. I tried and tried and I still try. I try to lift and push until I'm lame. And I peeled off all the paper I could reach from the floor. There was always that. But, but it stuck. It still sticks. And the pattern always laughed. Oh, I'm getting angry enough to do anything. To jump out of the window would be good. But the bars are too strong even to try again. And it wouldn't do. There's still so much to be done. So much. I don't like to look out of the windows even. 
There are so many creeping women, and they creep so fast, much faster than I can. I wonder if they all came off the paper, as I did. But I am firmly fastened now with my rope. They won't get me out in the road there, no. I suppose I shall have to get back behind the baton when it comes night. And that is hard. So hard. Oh, it is so pleasant to be out in this great room and creep as I please. I don't want to go outside. I won't. Not even if they ask me. For you have to creep on the ground outside. And everything is green instead of yellow. But here I can creep smoothly on the floor. And my shoulder just fits the long mark round the wall so I can't lose my way. And I crept and crept. And then John came. Just a moment ago. John came. And he knocked and knocked and cried out. And he seemed so angry and so anxious and so distressed. And he called for a hammer. But the nurse downstairs must have gone out for a minute. And he went on calling. So I had to call out to him after a time. But in the gentlest voice, I had to call that the key was down by the front steps where I'd thrown it. And he went down. I heard him going down. And then he ran up with the key, and he came in. He's in here now, in the room with me. But when he did come in, when he first came in, and when he stood there so empty and wild-looking in the door, oh, poor John, poor John, I went on creeping. But I smiled at him over my shoulder. But why should he have given such a little moan? Such a strange little moan. And why should he have crumpled so and fallen down? But he did. He did. Right across my path. Right across it by the wall. So I have to creep over him every time. Every time I go round and round now. I have to creep over him, over him, over him, over him when I go round, round and 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 round. Yes, fear is just a thought away, a haunting step away. I visited the woman the other day in her new home. Her room is small, but she likes it. The walls are a pleasant cream colour. She seems content. As I left, however, I stumbled against one of the walls. It was soft and yielding to the touch. Do you feel the same about the walls which surround you? Hmm? And when did you last touch them? In the yellow wallpaper, the woman was played by Anna Massey. It was written by Charlotte Parkins Gilman, dramatized by John Keir Cross, and directed by Jerry Jones. I am Edward de Souza. The Man in Black. And next week at the same time I shall be recounting a little tale which should be green and pleasant. But of course it may not be. <laughs> <laughs>